This video is brought to you by Holocasa. Our tool transforms independent local real estate agents to global real estate agents. Create your own profile for free and get contacted by international investors. Sign up with the link in the description. Hello and welcome everyone to our 94th session of Holocasa. My name is Michael and today I'm talking to Gonzalo Hall from Madeira, Portugal. Gonzalo is the founder of the Digital Village in Madeira. Um, it has been in the press uh, in various newspaper articles and actually across the world. We have talked about it with different people already on the show on Hello Casa. And now we are finally also the person directly having started this initiative. I'm super happy, super excited to have you on the show. Gonzalo, introduce yourself to our audience, please. Hello. First of all, thank you so much for the invitation, Michael. I think it's great and I love your show. Well, I'm Gonzalo. I am a remote work consultant. Now I'm also a digital nomad consultant. I'm helping destinations like Madeira um, here in Porto do Sol to develop a proper offer to digital nomads. It looks like we don't like we don't go to places we travel to communities so we have to, what we are doing here is like we have the perfect setup the perfect village this place is beautiful as you can see if you're watching this and yeah just creating a strong community here of like-minded people who want to have fun and with that of course we are doing this in the times of covid so we are very careful but at the same time we have here more than 100 people in a place that was empty due to the lack of tourism uh, so yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I also have several companies, um, Remote Europe, Remote Portugal, the Future of Work conferences. I help with running remote and other conference. So basically a lot of remote and a lot of nomadism in my career, at least lately in the last three years. That's so cool. Um, first of all, your uh, positioning is very well uh, done. So you are super for the ones who are not uh, watching. You are there in the sun, I think, right now in my home country in Germany. It's around like nine, one degree Celsius and you are sitting outside uh, in the sun. Um, I think uh, COVID is obviously also helping you. Um, I have uh, several people who I know personally who moved to, to Madeira and also are right now um, at your at your camp. Uh, that that's, uh, that's super funny. A lot of people also I know personally from Madeira. So... Um, I know that this island is definitely anyway, uh, with or without the digital uh, city and um, uh, village is super interesting just to travel. Why don't you give us a quick overview of Madeira itself, first of all? <sighs> Well, so I was I was all around the place. I was in Bali, I was in Thailand, I was in Canary Islands before coming here. And the truth is, Madeira is has something very specific. If you are from the US, definitely very similar to Hawaii. And this is not an overstatement. We have the nature, we have the wild greens, we have hiking all over the place in the middle of the nature. And the beautiful thing is you have the ocean, 20 degrees, and you have the nature. The ocean is one minute away from the co-working space to hike in the middle of the nature, completely in the middle of the nature. We are talking about five minutes. So this is Ponta do Sol. It's just a small old village, very cultural. Uh, we have an old cinema and everything. But that itself, in the north, you have surf. You have this very dramatic uh, landscape with uh, very beautiful greens, waterfalls everywhere. In the south, is a little bit more dry, like the ocean is calmer, so you can surf in the north. You can enjoy and swim in the south and everywhere is just nature. Of course, there is Funchal, the capital city, which uh, is also very beautiful. Personally, I prefer uh, small villages like Ponta do Sol, where you can actually build and connect with the community just by walking around. So this is Madeira Natural. Everywhere, the weather is like the island of eternal spring. It's uh, around 20 right now, 18 to 20 in the peak of the winter. And it will go up until 25 in the peak of the summer, 25, 26. So it's not too hot. It's not. It's never too cold. We are in the Morocco coast, uh, just one hour north from the Canary Islands. And to be honest, this was the most perfect place in the world to to be as a digital nomad. That was not on the map yet. I was again. I told you I was in the Canary Islands before. Definitely, they are doing a great job. And when I came to Madar, it was like, wow, this place is amazing. In terms of nature, I believe it's much better than the Canary Islands. Of course, we don't have the white sand beaches that the Canary Islands has. Uh, here, the attractive is definitely this mix of the nature and the food is cheap. And then you have the ocean to swim and we go swim every single day. Uh, so we know about it. And there is an old church that you will hear the bell every 15 minutes. So just as you know. Amazing. Um Give us a quick overview on uh, how everything started. Uh, why, um, how did you come up with it? Um, how, how, how did you take this initiative? Did you talk, uh, to which stakeholders did you have to talk to? Um, what was the process? Uh, and also obviously the motivation. 
Right, so I actually was invited. I organized several conferences, like I mentioned, and one of them is the Future of Work Portugal. Mm -hmm. Startup Madeira, through a mutual contact, approached me to organize it from Madeira mm -hmm. to, to make a statement like the internet here is good. You can work remotely mm -hmm. from Madeira because the internet is good and it is really mm -hmm. good. So I came here traveling on purpose to organize the conference from Funchal. And I just saw how crazy beautiful the island was. Although I am Portuguese, I haven't come here since I was mm -hmm. a kid, since I was like 13, 14 years old. I came back with the nomad eyes, uh, with eyes that would travel in the world and that saw where we can build communities like in Changu, like in Chiang Mai. And I just saw, wow, this place is beautiful. It's stupid that Madara is not on the center of the digital nomad mm -hmm. this world, or at least the digital nomads don't know about it. So I actually, we had the Secretary of Economy opening the conference and I told him, wow, this place is beautiful. You are losing a big opportunity. Canary Island just invested half a million to attract digital nomads. Madara has so much more to offer. Why are you not betting on mm -hmm. this? So actually you start to look with me, to me like very serious face. Like, okay. and he had said to the assistant that was there, Gonzalo needs to meet the president tomorrow. So the next day, like I travel here, I travel with shirts. I don't have shirts. I don't, I don't have nice clothes. But the next day in the middle of the conference, the palace was completely insane. So I just said pretty much the same thing, guys, but that is beautiful. This is a new market. The impact in the economy is so much bigger than the normal tourism. This can, this is something that you need to explore. This is something that you need to look at. And they were very, very interested from day one. So I wrote the whole project with Startup Madeira. Startup Madeira are managing the whole project. They are doing incredible jobs since answering 300 emails a day uh, to more than 300 emails sometimes to taking care and building the small co-working space we have here at Ponte do Sol. They are managing very well and very fast the whole process and the whole project. And in just three months, November, we're signing the contract. In February, we're launching everything. Uh, and now we have more than 350 people around the island. Around Ponte do Sol, it's probably already more accounts because it's way too many people. Ah, uh, really? Okay. So, um, and from, perfect. Thank, thank you so much for um, guiding us through the entire process. Um, I assume you also got, uh, was it also that you got some funds from, from, the, from the local government that they are supporting you or is it? Uh, yes. So, okay. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, they are paying for the whole project, of course. Like, uh, I'm a consultant, but I'm a paid consultant. Yeah. Uh, meaning they paid me to to make here the whole project and they are they are financing the co-working space, for example, and doing small investments in the internet infrastructure. And they built, they actually built the whole, like, chairs and tables and everything we have here. It's from Startup Madara, which is, which is one of the investors is the government. Perfect. Um, for the ones, let's say, for the ones participating in the project and having moved to to uh, Madeira and um, also being being there, um, working and and living in your village, um, give us an overview of the program. What can I expect? Um, how much does it cost? Um, what is it? Uh, what's in it for me? Um, some certain obstacles, maybe certain certain requirements. Um, you just mentioned the application process. Um, give us an overview there, please. So the first thing you should go do if you want to come is go to digitalnomads.startupmadara.eu and there you'll find the button to register. You just fill the survey, you register, and there is no application process because we don't select people. We just need to know that you come, where you're staying, and after you register, you will be added to our community on Slack. Uh, it's like we have more than 1,000 people already. It's where we can you can ask for accommodation, you can ask for advices, we can uh, help you with visas if you are not in Europe. Uh, we basically try to help you with anything we can into our power. And after that, you book your accommodation, your flights, and you come. It's very simple. In terms of prices, this is like we have the co-working space. Uh, we help with the accommodation. We have three people working almost full time in the project. And the price for you is exactly zero euros. There is no price. It's free. The co-working is free. Uh, the whole help is free, the community management is free. It's free because, again, the government is paying for all what's happening here. So we want to offer this uh, to you so you can come to Ponta do Sol, a place where you normally would probably not come, and we want you to experience Ponta do Sol. So that's why the government said, no, no, we will pay for everything. We'll have a working space, we organize small events around here with safety, we organize small events all around this, the village, and all of it is free. There is, of course, Great stuff. We organize community lunches. We organized yoga classes, trainings, CrossFit. There is a lot of things happening. In a normal day, you will have between 
four and six events per day. I mean, from morning yoga at the hotel here to community lunch, community breakfast two times a week. We have masterminds, we have skill shares, we have just going to the beach and drink and watch the sunset. We have small concerts happening like today. So everything is very small because of the pandemic. But at the same time, we, we are very careful because of COVID, but we can do this small cultural event, which like right now where the world is in the lockdown is actually, it feels like freedom. It feels like the like journalists came here today and said, well, this looks like the future, mm -hmm. meaning people are outside. We went to lunch out on the sun. Uh, you can go to the beach and have a swim in the middle of the day and then come back to work. This looks like the future. And it's exactly that. Everything is free. You have a lot of, of uh, opportunities to build community. You will meet a lot of people. The village is small. You'll meet the same people over and over again. And the thing that you cannot do in Lisbon, for example, is that you build true relationships with the people that are like-minded. You will not be friends from the 100 people that are here, but you will find your tribe. So there is a tribe that is entrepreneur. There is a tribe that is more yoga and employees, and but they want more into self-development. There is a tribe that is, we go for swimming every single day at six before the sunset. You will find your tribe, you will go out with them and you'll feel like a local, to be honest. You'll feel that you have a support system that as a nomad is not always a given. Um, especially also having, let's say, um, 100 people is not like overwhelmingly too little. You know, it's it's a good, I think it's yeah. a very good um, amount of people um, that it's like, okay, you're not getting, let's say, bored of the one of, of the people. You are feeling like, okay, you have time to get to know more and more people and you really can um, choose and pick certain dis interdisciplinary um, things which you are maybe interested in. Even though you might be an entrepreneur, you might say, hey, you know, I'm actually right now interested more into in, in, in yoga and I would like to go for that. Um, and exactly what you said about the program I had a look, uh, obviously, I'm also on the, on the Slack channel and I see like on a daily basis, you have like these announcements uh, where you more or less like post, okay, what's going on? What's, what's, the, what's, the, um, what's the agenda of today? I think it's very helpful to have that. Um, and it's very, let, let, let's say, it gives everyone a certain agenda um, to really recognize, okay, what you would like to do. Um, now, thinking about the next steps where where do you see um the entire program uh, jumping in and and going into into um let's say six months from now yes we have a plan so first i'll stay here for the next five months building the nomad village creating the community but after then i believe that punto Sol is perfect to be honest but there is more very interesting places around ireland even Funchal, uh, the capital but also several cities that we can find around the island and villages there as well so the next uh, here in Madara at least the next project will be develop this in more places help private setting up communities setting up co-living places help investors to come to Madara which is happening already with co-living co opportunities there is a lot of things and a lot of potential here in Madara specifically for around co-living so the next month I'll also be helping several companies to come here and well, and of course, this will not stay in Madeira. I'm, I'm just a hired consultant, so I'm setting up a team and I have a lot of contacts from different places around the world to set up communities there, to set up villages and there. And this is what I plan to do actually in the next years. So Madeira continue growing. Uh, also, you bring not just people that want to stay for two, three months, but also people that actually want to move here, which are actually a lot of Americans that want to work remotely and be based in Madeira now, but at the same time also want to work with different destinations to create and grow this market through community. And community here for me is the essential part. There is no good nomad destination without community. If you have community, if you want to build a community, that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing for most people to understand what is there to offer in the different locations and why we should build a community there. After that, I go in and I build a community for them. So I'm also growing more and more in different countries and I'm excited in the future to work with different countries that have different selling points and just create beautiful communities like this one, to be honest. That's amazing. Um, another quick question about the uh, maybe most exciting uh, projects which you think are right now in the village. Um, do you have some someone or a certain team uh, where you say, hey, you know, this is actually also sometimes a little bit groundbreaking. It is, it is uh, super exciting. Um, give us an, a, a good example. 
Mm, that's a very good question. We have actually several companies from Madeira and we have a startup from Portugal with more than 20 people that are starting to move here. So they work more on the content and SEO uh, management. About startups itself, I don't know, there is beautiful projects, to be honest. Even TransferWise is around. We have very mm. big companies around here. Amazon is around. Microsoft is around. So we don't have full startups yet. Actually, this is something we want to bring in the second part of the project related to your previous question. We want to help more startups to come here for one or two months and just hard work uh, together, you know, just hustle, 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 enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. As of now, we have several different people that work for startups, for example, community managers for game startups, which is very interesting. Uh, they manage, they manage uh, online communities for startups that are in the gaming, mm -hmm. which is really, really, really cool. And it's just exploding right now. And we are very focused on community. So that comes deep in our heart when we see these kind of projects. Uh, but yeah, more around that, like several different people working for startups, but not yet fully startups being here. Definitely. And he just pushed this idea and I have a meeting today. Definitely something we want to do, help startups coming here for a couple of months and just hustle, 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 enjoy, enjoy, enjoy and create great things, build great products from Adara. I definitely need to come. I think uh, this, is, this, is, yes. this is for me like <laughs> the call to action for me. Hey, Michael, you know, I... Uh... I hope you're going to receive me, um, and and especially Man, and it's just around that. It's very special when you are around three, let's say, one hundred to three hundred people in Madeira, and you can have business business meetings disguised as swimming clubs, disguised as let's drink a, a cup of wine, let's drink a beer, let's drink a poncha. You are kind of always in business meetings and you learn so much because everybody's doing something completely different from developing apps, developing amazing websites, at the same time developing communities, like I mentioned before, working for big companies like TransferWise. Everybody's doing something great. So when you are around these people, when you see them building in front of you their big companies, mm -hmm. when you see them mindstorming and just wanting to create something new, any person that is creating something right now, like I was two years ago, you can drink from this knowledge. You can just contact a guy that is amazing in building apps and ask his opinion about your app. And this is very special. This is this is why the community is so important, not just because it's beautiful and you make friends, but business-wise, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. I can totally resonate with it because right now I live in a, in a space where um, content creators uh, are, are there in the house with the people who are in a marketing agency, someone is working for Facebook, the other person is a rapper and singer, uh, for which the other person creates the the video and you know, like you have exactly this interdisciplinary um, leverage and multiplication of talent and yeah. expertise, and uh, you, can, you can create something very meaningful. Um, and you also mentioned TransferWise, and it's funny because I'm incorporated in Estonia, and I know that TransferWise is one of the success stories uh, with uh, from Estonia with the e-residency program, which is, uh, I think, one of the greatest tools for for uh, for entrepreneurs to keep the. We also yeah. we also have here the e-residency people, people that help e-residency promotion program. We have like three, four guys here that started this, and they are the biggest promoters in the world of e-residency as well. Perfect. Well, <laughs> send them the best regards. I'm I'm super happy with uh, with the entire program. Um, Same. It's amazing. It, 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 it totally is amazing, and uh, that's absolutely uh, that's absolutely absolutely true. Um, now you mentioned Americans and US, U.S. Americans, and I'm talking a lot with uh, U.S. Americans who want to um, buy properties in Europe, um, getting the golden visa, for example, which is also obviously applicable to uh, to Madeira, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yes. And a lot of Americans right now are seeking a second passport. Um, a lot of people from abroad uh, want to uh, want to invest in Europe. Um, and again, it's it was also uh, several people from the US uh, sending me the link for the for, 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 for about your program, which is funny. And uh, so um, there, for example, visa, is there any 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 uh, program which also allows, let's say, US Americans, or someone from outside Europe to stay longer than the normal 90 days visa program, which you have for for a vacation program? We have a lot of different visas in Portugal, mm -hmm. all but the one that I really want, and I'm trying to push the government in that direction, which is a remote work slash digital nomad visa like Croatia and so many, and Estonia, that was the first country we have. 
Well, we don't have it. The D7 visa, D7 is the most uh, famous one. It's usually a passive income visa, but if your income comes from outside Portugal, it also works. Most of Americans have their income coming from the US, so you can also get the D7 visa. Golden visa, definitely. And we predict even that a lot of people with a, with a golden visa will start investing here because Lisbon, Porto and some big cities will be out of the system uh, very, very soon. So you'll not be able to use this money in Lisbon, Porto and several other cities because there's just too many people buying houses and this price is skyrocket. So we predict a lot of people to choose Madeira instead. But first for start, after the three months, the D7 visa is the easiest to get. There is a lot of companies around uh, offering you help and the system is quite easy to go through so i would start with the d7 if you have any form of passive income there is also d3 which is a different visa there is a startup visa if you want to build a startup here startup Madeira can definitely help you with that and uh, so yeah a lot of different options the most famous one around here with americans is the d7 yeah. for how long um does it then allow you as a, as a u.s american or someone from outside europe to stay one year but i think you can renew it afterwards okay Perfect. Um, now talking a little bit about um, also obviously since we are on the real estate uh, real estate um, show, I'm always interested in uh, maybe there. Uh, where do you see the trends? You just talked about like the investments and stuff. Maybe um, giving COVID triggering a certain maybe overdue trend globally to. Um, push remote work, which then has spillover effects to local economies, um, less money being put into mega cities, which has been actually the foreseen trend previous to COVID. Uh, when we when we uh, refer to, I don't know, McKinsey reports or uh, reports by Frost and Sullivan or whatever there is. Um, and now suddenly we have this new trend to say, no, work from anywhere work from wherever you want um where do you see or what do you see there right now the next impacts on madeira on prices on also the local society uh, maybe there are also some challenges for the local society for the local local people um because the least we want to have is having local people being pushed out of you know apartments because they're getting getting too expensive um Yeah. Uh, using using the the buzzword on on uh, gentrification um can you can you give us a, maybe there your your point of view this is a very big question of course and definitely you are right people will move out from cities because people move into cities uh because their jobs were there they just move into because they needed to be close to the office Now the future of, the future is definitely remote. There is no discussion about it. There are several ways this can go, but the future is remote. So people will start moving away from cities. My belief is people want to stay 30 minutes to one hour close to a city, more to for access to culture and more for access to big shopping malls than exactly for access to the city itself. So in the world, I predict that for a lot of small cities, for example, it is said in Portugal, Zimbra, close to where we are right now, all these cities will get, will be, the prices will increase and we'll see more people moving there. Here in the data, we will see this happening in the south, in the south coast where I'm right now, around Porto do Sol. Uh, we see this already. And I think it will not impact that much the locals because locals, most of them still work in Funchal and uh, not all, but a lot of them work in Funchal and usually the foreigns, uh, the expats buy big houses around Ponte do Sol, around Calieta, which is Ponte do Sol is 20 minutes from Funchal, Calieta is 30 minutes from Funchal. Mm -hmm. You have an amazing quality of life. You have your own beach two minutes away from your room. You can buy a, a very, like a big house for 250, 300,000 euros. Uh, I mean, uh, with 300,000, you can buy a house with pool, with two floors, with four, usually three to four, four bedrooms around here. And we, we predict five to 10,000 people to to move here to Madara in the next five years. And the biggest reason is we are receiving weekly people asking about moving here. We are receiving weekly people asking me about visas like you did, because people now understand that Madara is actually not so far away from the US, for example. We have direct flights for the UK, uh, which is another big market here. And well, we have sun all year round. I'm here in the, in the middle of March, just enjoying the sun, talking with you. And yeah, people actually want to move here. The food is nice. You can eat in the restaurant for eight to 10 euros. So definitely people will start moving more and more to Madeira. For example, just before I came, 
the, the head of accelerator of Nike in the US just moved here. She bought a house, got a visa, so she's actually almost our neighbor. She lives 10 minutes away from me. And we are talking about the head of accelerator of one of the biggest companies in the world. All this is important, of course. All this, by, by her being here, this will lead to more people wanting to come here. And the thing that was missing in Madeira before we came here, it was a community. Because she came here, but she was lonely. She was lonely because there was no community. The same with another Amazon uh, expat I met here. She's living here for two years. She loves it, but she feels lonely. What we built now was the perfect solution. We built a community where they can just they can just jump in, mix with different people, meet a lot of interesting people. They can come to the events, and we love them to come as well. So now they have a community, and so the value around here is just increasing. Not everyone knows about Madara. Very few Americans know about Madara still. This is a golden jewel. So in the next 10 years, definitely a lot of people will use Madara as a platform to move to Portugal and even get a golden visa, a Portuguese golden visa, and have then a free pass for the rest of Europe. And again, we have flights for most Europe, uh, Portugal, Spain, Germany, UK, Czech Republic, Poland. There's flights pretty much everywhere to Madara. So we have here a good base. Uh, even to go to the US, Lisbon is one hour away, then you can fly direct to the US, or you can go through Azores with SATA, for example. So it's a good platform to be close enough to the US, five hours uh, time zones from the uh, from New York. Uh, so yeah, I predict, we predict that a lot of people from UK and the US will move here uh, very, very soon, as soon as they can, actually. And a lot of them are already taking care of the whole process. So definitely the house markets and the houses around Fushal, I think in Fushal so many people will want to move there because it's just another city, so to say. It's beautiful, but it's just another city. But around Calieta, around Ponto do Sol, where I am, and around this southern region, just too close from Fushal, prices will increase. And there's a lot of uh, opportunities already in the market. And even hotels will be very different in the future here with the stay of digital nomads. So it will be a fun market, not just because it's beautiful, but also because you have a nice community around you. Um, and I guess you might be even faster from New York City um, to Madeira than from New York to uh, Hawaii. Uh, can that be? For sure, for <laughs> sure, yeah. That's funny. Um, and and this Hawaii is much cheaper than the, one, than the other one. And I have to say, I haven't been to uh, to Madeira, but I have to say that uh, the Canary Islands, I think it's like Fort Ventura, uh, Puerto Ventura and, uh, and uh, the others, except for La Gomera, are basically um, more volcanic um well you have Tenerife, which is quite quite green but i really like about madeira from what i've seen and i've been told about um it's very green so you have like it's not that it's, volcanic and it's it's very or i don't know if it's volcanic is it volcanic i think all the islands are somehow volcanic yeah. here actually it's fun because you see behind me you have the part uh, of the the rock that's not volcanic but just in front of me on the other valley, on the other side of the valley, there is the volcanic rock. So we have both, but everything is super green. So all the island is actually covered with green or with banana trees or with a natural forest. What do you, what would you like to share with the audience as, like, let's say, the final, final words um, to someone who has, uh, yeah, who, who is listening? Yeah, look at this market. The world will change forever after this pandemic. Be smart. Mm -hmm. There is so many opportunities right now in places that are attracting digital nomads, specifically in the south of Europe, in Madeira, in Canary Islands, in the future in Cape Verde, in the south of Croatia, in Greece. There's so many opportunities. The money will change so fast. So many people will move south to work from there at six months to one year that there is very big opportunities in the market right now. So, yeah follow the trend, get more information, contact me if you need some some other help. I'll be more than glad to share my vision like I share with you. But the world will change. When the world changes, business opportunities come. And yeah, just embrace the business opportunities because it's a good time to invest in the right real estate. Perfect. Amazing. Gonzalo, um, give us a quick, uh, you, you already gave us a quick um, overview on how people can contact you um, as a final final um, conclusion. Um, what, what what is the best way to, to reach out to you? Definitely LinkedIn is the one I still try to answer everyone, although I, I'm failing since the last month because we started the project and I have a couple of hundred messages to go. But LinkedIn is the one where I accept everyone. Uh, all the others are more personal. LinkedIn is a professional network. In I, I write every week about digital nomadism and remote work. So even if you want, just want to get informed about what's happening in the world of remote work, digital nomadism, this, all the changes that are happening 
have a big impact in your life and in your investments, uh, just feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Gonzalo Hall, which will be spelled Goncalo Hall, uh, H-A-L-L. And yeah, just connect with me. I will be more than happy to answer all your questions in the future. Amazing. Thank you so much. Gonzalo, thank you so much for your time today. I, I know um, you're, you're running and you are, you're uh, running from meeting to meeting. Um, I really appreciate the time. I am really looking forward to meet you in person, uh, hopefully soon. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I send the best regards to, to Madeira and, uh, and especially like a lot of success. Um, I assume that there are still like challenges and there are a lot of especially like challenges on a global scale to, let's say, structure um, in a certain way very well the digital normal trend, the yeah. work from anywhere trend. I think it's we can even get rid of the digital normal trend because it's just like this. It just phases into a general, general normality to be able to work from anywhere for the ones who, who, are, yeah. who are eligible to do that. Um, so I think there needs to be... There need to come some certain process and 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 uh, and uh, certain structures still in place which are still missing on a global scale. Um, I really appreciate your time again, and uh, yeah, I'm sending sending the best regards and uh, hopefully see you soon. Thank you so much, Michael. I hope to see you soon here in Madara, enjoying the sun with us instead of the cold in the place you are right now. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much, and uh, <laughs> bye bye. Hopefully, see you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Have a nice day.